afternoon, everybody. Good morning to our West Coast folks. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm the training manager here, and today's Friday, so that means features and training today. So today we're going to be looking at the posting or the create invoice screen in the software. Uh, this step is a critical step in the accounting process. Basically, this gives us the chance to check over our calls after you know we've ran them or, or when the driver finished them, um, and it, it just allows us to potentially fix calls or add services that may have been missed when we're dispatching. So uh, we're going to go ahead and switch screens and jump straight in today. All right. So as always, what we're going to start with is signing into the software. All right. So we've got our username and password. And we will go over to our accounting screen. So I'm going to stop here for a second. I want to explain the screen. So we have three boxes here. We have unbilled, open invoices, and paid invoices. We're going to really concentrate on the unbilled calls today. So what this means, it shows that we have 38 unbilled calls for $3,600. Now, if all 38 of those calls that we haven't checked over yet were correct, then yes, my $3,600 would be correct. If I have to correct any one of these calls, that number could go up or down depending on what changes that I make. So use this more as a guide more than an accurate number. If we're looking for an accurate number, we're going to run a report at that point. All right. The underbuild, this warning here, you really never want to see this. What this means is that we have calls that are older than 30 days that haven't been checked over for one reason or another. Um, so I'm going to show you here if I click on this, I'm going to start with the blue section. If I click on the blue section, this will show me all 38 of those calls that we have not checked over yet. So we can see that we go back here, September 4th is my oldest call. We can fix these here or we can fix it on the create invoice screen and I'll show you that here in a second. If I click on the red, the underbuild, this is going to bring in everything that's older than 30 days. Um, so you know, going back September 4th to, you know, we got some calls from April here. Now our search screen, I, it shows the top 100 results. If I hit show more, it brings in another 100. If I hit show max, it brings in a thousand. So in our database here, we have 464 calls total, older than 30 days that have not been checked over for one reason or another. Now, these old calls in here, these could have been calls that were supposed to be canceled. It could have been calls that maybe I was still waiting for paperwork on, whatever the case is. If the call is showing here, it's not part of your accounts receivables. So you really wanna make sure you're taking care of these calls here uh, and posting them or clearing them out. Um, if they're sitting here, like I said, they're not part of your receivables. So we're gonna look at this too here in just a second. So let me close this. So again, under build, if you see this, take a look at it. Let's see why there's calls in there. Now, if you're a customer that's been using Beacon for a while, um, it is possible that you have old calls there that we may need to help clear out. You know, you know things from years ago, for example. Yeah, if you're seeing something like that and you need help, give us a call. We can definitely help you with that. But I'm going to start here. I'm going to go into Create Invoices. Right. Now, when you first load into this screen, it will default to today's date. So we can see that uh, today, finish calls today. I don't have any in my database yet. The first thing you want to do in this screen is set your filter. All right. Now, recently we've added a couple new features in here to make it easier, and a couple of these were customer requests. Let's set this for, I'm going to use this month for our example today. You could also do you know, yesterday, you can choose a date range, you may choose any time if you want to bring all those calls in to see why they're there, but I'm going to use this month. All right. Let's do a search. So normally this brings in my normal screen. Uh, everything finished this month uh, shows here. The other features we've added though, we've added a group by box and we've also added a show bin and odometer on this screen. So I'm going to click that. So when I click that, I'm going to get two new columns here, bin and odometer. This may help, especially with the Jero calls or just any calls that you're requiring bin and odometer on. You can see it here. The group by option, normally it groups by location. In this case, my location is green light towing. If I had multiple locations, it would be like green light towing, maybe green light roadside, whatever I have. We've also added a feature to group by driver. 
So if I do that, we can kind of see now Alex has a call, uh, other Alex has one call, Brian has a couple calls, Nick has a couple calls in here. So it allows me to go through potentially the driver's tickets or just that driver one at a time to verify their calls. So depending on how you want to look at this, uh, you have a couple different options here. You could also set other filters, you know, one vision at a time, one account maybe at a time, maybe a specific driver one at a time. You have other options here depending on how you like to look at your calls or at least how you like to verify your calls. Um, so we're going to keep it, um, I'm going to do division here and just load everything in. All right. So over on the right hand side I can see that I have 12 calls that I need to check over and as I start going through I can open up one call at a time. All right, so we have this uh, call here for BG Auto. Shows I have a tow in route mileage on it. Right? If I like to look at all the calls, or at least all the services on the call all at once, I can use this little toggle button up here. And this is going to open up all the calls, so now I can see all the services on every single call. Right? As we're going through, you may see warnings on calls. Right? And a warning could be, if this down arrow is highlighted, you have a potential problem with your services, or a good call like this. If the pencil is highlighted, that means that we're missing required fields for billing. All right, and we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. But we're going to start right at the top. All right. So we got this call here. I can see that our calculator was used here, 19 miles for both of these. Right. And if we look at the call below that, the one with the warning on it. It does show that we have in route mileage on it, but my quantities were zero. All right? And I also don't see that the mileage was right here. That means on this call, for whatever reason, we didn't use the calculator. So this might be an example of going back into the call and fixing it. Right? On these specific calls, 10669 uh, and 10655, you can see that these services were paid in full from the screen now. This is also a new feature that we've added recently. If we looked up on this line though, we can see that that view payments and receipts button is a selectable field. That means that I have a partial payment on that call. And then if I open it up, I can see which services were paid. So based on this, um, our zero dollar in route mileage have been paid off. My toe has not, I don't have any payment on it. Right? If I look at a call like this right here, let me minimize this. This is gonna show me here that all the services were paid or that entire call is paid in full at this point. All right. If I need to see the payments that were taken on these calls, I can also get to that right from here now too. Again, this is a new feature that we've added. So if we look at this call, we can see that we've actually had five payments on this call, You know, a couple for a dollar, and then this one payment for 146. Um, so it's just more of a shortcut if we're trying to verify payments on calls. We can go in and look. Uh, so it looks like we, you know, we're doing some testing here for Express Pay, um, but it allows you to see the payments quickly, or if a call was paid as you're checking this over. Uh, this could be helpful for, you know, maybe you have a cash call or a retail call that you know payment's been received on it, but it's not showing paid for some reason. It allows you in this step to verify it, potentially apply the payment, or go look up the payment to apply it in the system, or maybe even see just why the payment hasn't been received yet. Uh, so again, these are all different tools to help you as you're verifying your calls. Right. So let's look at one of these calls here right, that have potential job information missing. So let's look at this Bob's Cadillac call. So I'm going to click this pencil, and this will take me into my call. Right. So on this call, it's our VIN number. You're going you're gonna to see that for two reasons. Either you're missing required billing information, or you have a bad VIN, one of the two. Right. In this case, our VIN is actually set up, and our odometer is actually set up as a driver field, but it's also set up as a required posting field. So what that means is if it's missing, so in this case our driver didn't put our, odo our odometer, excuse me, reading, reading in. So we have to fix that, all right? We could also make the driver do it if they have access to it, but we have to fix it, or at least it's going to warn us that say, hey, you set up a required posting field. This is not filled out, so go ahead and fix it at this point and push this through. All right. So if I make something up here, I'm actually going to use, let's use a full VIN. We'll use Beacon 2, Ohio, and say 5,000. All right. This PO field has been filled out. That's why it's pink. A pink field only 
is a required to post field. So if you need to configure or set up your accounts for different required fields, whether it be from a dispatcher, driver, or accounting, uh, you can do that through your settings area. Uh, we did a video a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago about the setup side of it. So if you have questions on that, uh, refer to that video in our playlist, uh, or you can give us a call. We can always help you out too. All right, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. Our services look good at the bottom. You know, Maybe I'm missing in route, so let's go ahead and add that. You know, maybe I know this was a call that had dollies on it or something like that. Go and save it. All right, so I went ahead and fixed my call, and you can see my warning went away because I fixed my required posting fields, and all my services show here now. All right. Now, if these calls don't have a warning, that may mean it's correct, but it might not. Now, if there's additional services you were supposed to add, it's not going to warn you for something like that. You just have to fix it. So whether our dispatcher was supposed to fix that, whether our driver has access to add services, or whether you're fixing it at this step, this is the step to finalize the call or say, you know, for call 10634, I either build or want to bill 24580. All right, so it's your chance to verify it. And again, finalize that call before pushing it into accounts receivables, right? So let's just say we got some of these fixed. Let's say I fixed this one. This one was good because the payment was applied. And then that BG Auto one was correct. I want to push that through. So I can select them one at a time. I could also use this button up here to select all of them. But I'm just going to use those three for right now and save them. I'm going to get a green check mark on these. And now if I refiltered or set my filter again on these, those three calls are going to be gone because I verified them. All right, so they won't show up here again. Now, what other question that we get here or what could potentially happen? All right, let's take, let me open up this call. All right, so let's just say I've posted 10646 and I've saved it. All right, so again, if I set my filter, it disappears. You come back to this call later, you're like, oh wait, I forgot to put a bunch of information on it. I forgot to put the in route service. We'll just make something up because I don't have addresses. We'll say 10. I forgot to add mileage. Again, there's no addresses on this call, so I'm just going to make something up, whatever, let's say 7. Maybe I had, I don't know. Maybe I sold a battery on this one too. Whatever the case is. Okay. So I've added some extra services after this call has been posted. All right. If I set my filter again here, that call feeds back in here 10646-2. All right. Remember, my primary service has already been posted, but I just added that in route mileage and that battery service. What's happening here is it's trying to feed in as a dash two. What that means or the reason you may use this. Let's look at our invoice. This will make more sense this way. In route mileage battery, my invoice says P-10646. Anytime you see a P- on your invoices, that means it's a preview. It means it has not been posted or it has not been checked over yet or finalized in this step. This is page one of two. I go to page two, 10646-1, here's my toe. If I leave that as a dash two, you're going to get two pages for your customer. Page one being the toe, page two being the rest of the mileage and the battery. If you have two parties paying for things, party A and party B, and you need to split it this way, this is what that feature is for. A majority of the time though, this is just something that you forgot the first time. So we have this merge button. Right? Typically, I would say 99% of the time for customers, if you see a dash 2, dash 3, dash 4, depending on how many times you've added stuff uh, after you've posted it, most of the time you should be using that merge button and pushing everything back together into a dash 1 invoice. So what happens there? It changes to 10646. We also put a warning on this. Anytime you have a dash two, dash three, dash four, we put a warning on it and it will tell you an invoice already exists for this job. 
that dash one in this case. Uh, performing this action will create a new invoice. Use the merge button to you know add those additional services. So we try to warn you if that is happening, uh, if you don't notice it. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and override this and push this back together into a dash one invoice. All right, so we'll save it. So I have that call open. So if I look at my invoice now, we'll see it's now 10646-1, and all my services have been pushed back together. Right. What happens also, let's use, I'm going to open up this call. What do we have on here? All right, jump start. Okay, good. So let me save this one. Let's add, let's add an in route to this one. Let's make it a little bit higher. Let's say it's 15. Add it. Save it. Oops. I have a required field there. I got to fill out. Let me save it. Okay. What happens if I post it as a dash two? So let's open up that invoice. Let me save it. Or you come back to a call later on and you find that this has happened. If I go into my invoice, I have a dash one or page one with a jump start on it. My page two is my in route service. You may look at this and be like, that's not what I wanted. Somebody made a mistake or I made a mistake when I was posting it. I pushed it through incorrectly. How do I fix this? You can check your services down here. So this is the call again. In this pencil icon, there is a billing tab. This will show you the invoice number when it was posted. All right. Actually, let me refresh that job. Let me. Uh, 106, 50. Let me open it again. There we go. So our in route now is a dash two. If this was supposed to be a dash one, I don't have a way to just change that here. I have to basically repost this call. So if I trash can that and I add it again, you'll see now if I check that service, there's nothing here. By deleting a service, you technically unpost it, and then you'd have to repost it again. But I'll show you what happens now. So I'm going to do a quick, uh, just a quick save on it. And this time, I'm going to use my shortcut key here, this create invoice or post job on the call. What this is going to do now, I could reset my filter over on the screen I was on before. But if I use this button individually for this call, what happens is, it takes me into that posting or that create invoice screen just for that call, right? So there's that in route service that we just re-added. But you can see it's feeding in as a dash three this time. This is the third time I'm trying to post this call. Not a big deal though. I can still use my merge button here. And then I make it a dash one. Save my invoice. And then again, if I preview my invoice now for that call, everything's correct. It's all up back on one page. So if you do run across that, you can fix it. Just delete the service and re-add it. So we're going to close these. Reset my filter again. Oops. This month. The only thing you can do on these uh, on this screen here, these columns are all, are all sortable. So if I wanted to do, you know, oldest to newest, I can do something like that. If I wanted to group all the the accounts, the similar accounts together, I can do something like that. You know, calls with POs, without POs, whatever you want to do, or at least whatever information makes it easier for you to check over your calls. The only other column on here is your account. Uh, we get a lot of questions on this. The account just shows how many services are on the call. So if I opened up this call, this call has three services on it. If I look at this call, this call has four services on it. So it may be helpful if you're looking at your calls and you know, you know maybe you do a lot of motor club work and pretty much every call should have at least two services on it, in route and whatever your primary service is. It may be helpful to sort this out and say, you know, all my calls I have a count or a service of one, I know I have to go back and fix those calls and add an additional service before pushing it through. You know, I know customers that use it that way. Um, so you can sort any one of these columns. I do want to talk about one other filter in here before I come off this page. That is the include impound filter. So by default, we don't bring in your impound calls in here. 
if you are creating the invoice or posting that job that is in impound, that sale amount or that revenue total will become a open balance. So depending on how you do your accounting, you may or may not want to do that. Um, most people don't count those impounds as part of their revenue until it's released from impound. When it normally gets released through the normal process of the software, it's just a finish call. So it should show up here for the finish date. If I post this call that's in impound currently, so these are all currently in impound, you know, from yesterday, from the fourth, etc., I'm going to record that sale on that finish date, not my release date. So just be careful about that. Most of our companies do not post their impounded vehicles ahead of time. Again, they wait till it's finished, um, but that is not turned on by default, but it is an option. If you need to record that sale ahead of time, you may need to select that button. Um, but that, that's really all there is for the filter. So again, a couple of the new options, the group by, show VIN and odometer if we want to see that here without having to open up the call. Um, and then just a way to, depending on what calls you're looking at, setting your filter. Um, so that's all there really is to the posting screen and verifying the calls. So let me close this real quick. And let's look at this screen again. You'll be like, well, wait a second. I thought you just posted a couple calls. Why does it still say 38? Well, this screen will refresh the first time you come into it. So if I would close the software and reopen it, it would uh, actually reset here. But we did add a refresh button here. So if I refresh it, you'll see that number count comes down. Some of those uh, balances moved into my open invoices. And then some of the payments might have moved over here. Um, so. Anything that's open and we're waiting to receive payment for, and then just payments we received in the last 30 days. And again, these are gonna be future trainings that we're gonna cover. But if you wanna see the numbers move through the process, you can click that refresh button. It's not mandatory, but a lot of times it's nice to see the numbers get lower and move through the process. And that's why we've added this button here. Uh, but again, this will only refresh the first time you come into the screen. The only other setting I wanna talk about today with posting, and let's open up our settings real fast. Under divisions and accounting, you may have seen this feature, auto post on payment. Right? So basically what this means load this month again. I'm going to take this Nick's auto body call. All right, let's open it up. If I take a payment in full, so let's say it's cash, for example. Payment recorded. So there's my receipt and invoice. I'm just going to close these because I don't need them right now. And I reset this 10637. That should disappear. Yeah, so 10637 just disappeared here. Auto post means if you have the security level to post calls in the first place, you're taking a payment in full, which I did on that call, and all the fields that are required for billing are filled out, it will automatically bypass this step and just push it through. Right? So really the main key to that is it's saving you time from rechecking it over. The logic behind it is if you can post the call and you're taking a payment in full, and everything that you said was required for billing is filled out, why do we need to check it over again a second time? Now, this feature is a good feature for some people, but not everybody. So if you want your calls to show up on the screen all the time, in your settings, you gotta make sure that that feature is turned off. So it depends how you wanna see, if, if you wanna see all the calls, or if you want some calls to auto post. Um, now, drivers, they don't have the ability to post calls, so if a driver takes a payment in full, that call will show up on your posting screen 100% of the time. Uh, this is just, again, for people that have posting capabilities, taking a payment in full, and then making sure all the fields are, re all the required fields are filled out at that point. All right. So those are only little fields with the posting screen or the create invoice screen that you may change um, as you're, as you're you know, moving through the, through the process here. All right. So just a quick recap. So today we took a, looked at, uh, took a look at the Create Invoice and the Posting screen. Showed you a couple of the new features with the different filters that we offer. Um, 
couple little demos about how to use this screen, how to merge invoices if it ever comes up. Um, if you guys have any questions on any of this uh, stuff, leave a comment in the section below. You could also give us a call, set up a training. We can definitely help you out with any problems you may have with this step. But again, this step is a crucial step in your accounting. If this step is not done, nothing else as far as accounting works in our software. Uh, if you're a customer that's going to be transferring things to QuickBooks, it will not transfer to QuickBooks until this step is done. You know, If you're paying commissions, you can't pay commissions on a call until you check it over, things like that. So again, this is really a, a critical, crucial step in your accounting process. We want to make sure that you understand this and that you know calls are getting checked over, uh, you know, at least on a somewhat regular basis. Right. Uh, so I hope you found this video useful. Um, again, if you have any questions or uh, any potential problems, give us a call so we can help you out. Next week, we're going to be covering driver settings and QR codes. Uh, so we're going to go over how the drivers can do pre-trip inspections, how you can configure driver settings depending on what you want them to see, uh, what you want them to do, you know, things like that. Um, so again, thank you for your time today. And uh, with no other questions, we will see you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.